On October 13, 1775, the Continental Congress authorized the creation of the first American naval force, the predecessor of today's United States Navy. Over the unquantifiable number of hours spent trapped on small floating metal boxes, sailors have found some strange ways to deal with the boredom. Line crossing ceremonies to mark passing the equator are a rich tradition and can be a somewhat shocking experience for the uninitiated. Why would anyone want to do this? The rituals are intended to test the fortitude of new sailors on their first open sea cruise. Weird costumes have become a common feature of the two day ceremonies for no apparent reason. This is how it usually goes. Newbies, otherwise known as polywogs, slimy polywogs, or slimy wogs, must undergo a rite of passage under the careful observation of the court of Neptune. King Neptune and his royal court of disguised shellbacks, or veteran line-crossing sailors, mandate a series of trials that the polywogs must endure. What the f*** is a polywog? These tasks, an assortment of pranks, gags, and strange physical challenges, are generally embarrassing. When the events end, the polywogs receive a certificate declaring their acceptance into the exclusive club of line crossers. Probably the best known tradition in the US Navy is Fleet Week. Fleet Week, which can include the Coast Guard and the Marine Corps, begins with military vessels docking at major cities around the country for events and celebrations honoring the US Sea Services. Fleet Week was first considered official in 1988 but U.S. naval vessels have ported at New York City for celebrations since the end of the Spanish-American War in 1898. Each year since the 1940s, during the Naval Academy's commissioning week, plebes have endured a zany ritual known as the Herndon Monument Climb. The 21-foot-tall obelisk was named in honor of Commander William Lewis Herndon. The tradition as it exists today involves hundreds of future U.S. naval officers working together to replace the Dixie Cup cap perched on top of the vegetable shortening covered monument, with a cap typically worn by upperclassmen. The changing of the cap marks the official end to the plebe year. The Steel Beach Picnic Day tradition provides sailors at sea with a well-deserved break from the daily grind in the form of a naval-style barbecue. Held on the decks of aircraft carriers, destroyers, and even submarines, the festivities include activities usually enjoyed in backyards or at the beach. Depending on the ship, the scene can look like a giant party. On submarines, sailors might spend the day hitting golf balls off the deck, participating in diving contests, or fishing in lawn chairs. Since the Navy stopped being awesome in 1914, I mean since alcohol was outlawed in the Navy in 1914, ice cream has become the American seafarer's go-to replacement for ice-cold suds. During World War II, the Navy went above and beyond to serve its sailors frozen treats, even building a $1 million ice cream barge. World War II crews serving on submarines, destroyers, and other naval vessels who rescued downed pilots were rewarded with ice cream. More recently, during the global war on terror, Navy SEAL Chris Fettis relied on making ice cream to boost morale among his comrades. Fettis continues to make and sell ice cream at Be Free Craft Ice Cream in Virginia Beach. 